Hi, welcome back to the farm. My name's Roz, also known as Passion Flower, and you'll find me here each week talking about my farming and creative life. So far this summer, we have had all of the crazy weather. We've had humidity, heat, smoke haze, hail, heavy rain, winds, the lot. And one day this week, we pretty much had all of those things in the span of about five minutes. Although it has been very hot and humid, we've then been having these huge storms and downpours that have just like flash floods. All this rain is keeping the grass green and the tanks and the dam full. Compared to last year, where the dam was basically down to a tiny little puddle and the earth was cracked and dry and all of the paddocks were yellow. On the day with the heaviest rainfall, I actually had to get out amongst it in the storm to check the downpipes on the shed. We have uh, rigged up some downpipes until we get the tank installed so that the water will not flow straight down from the gutters, but will flow through the pipes and out into the paddock. So the only way to actually test to see that they're working properly is to see them when it's raining. So I went out and double checked to make sure that they were secure at the top of the gutters and that they were running down and out and everything there was working fine. What I did have to do was move some logs and a ramp that we'd sort of put in place to get vehicle in and out of the shed. It was making a pool of water on one side and if I'd left it, it would have gone up above the level of the slab and probably flooded inside. So I was able to get all of that away and make sure that the water was flowing. The other thing I then noticed while I was out was that the main house tank was overflowing because the filter was dirty. So I had to get up on a ladder in the pouring rain and try and clear that out as well. So I'm standing on this ladder, I've got water pouring down my arms, uh, my gum boots were getting filled with water um, and I managed to kind of get it so that it wasn't gushing out anymore. Um, and as soon as I got down off the ladder, the rain stopped. And by that point I was completely drenched and uh, my gum boots have only just dried now. I also did a little bit more temporary fence work this week. We discovered that some of the cows were able to get up into the area where the shed was. And it took us a little while to figure out how they were able to do it. But we discovered that there was a gap in one of the fences where we thought it would just was grown over with plants, but they'd managed to push through. So I first had to get the cows out of where they were, which started off as a struggle. They, uh, they moved a little bit and I got in behind them and then they just stood fairly close to the gate and just looked at me and wouldn't move. Um, so it was a bit of a standoff for a little while, but I managed to get in behind them and kind of shoo them. And they did uh, leave the area and go down to join the rest of the cows. So then to fix the gap, we've got a pile of building materials and uh, pieces of old cubby houses and things like that, that we're looking to repurpose around the farm. And part of that, there was a piece of picket fence. So what I thought I would do rather than try and use wires or anything like that was just to drag this piece of fence up into the gap, uh, lock it in place with some star pickets wedged into the ground and hope that if the cows pushed up against the other side, it would push the star pickets further into the ground and it would make them so that they would not be able to get through. So far so good with that. Um, but we probably do have to do some work. There's always work to do with these fences, but it was good enough for the time being. I think I mentioned a while ago that I've got a couple of boxes of vintage knitting and crochet patterns. And as I'm starting to pack up my things and think about what I'm gonna be moving over to the shed, I thought I'm gonna to have to sort through these and reduce what I have. So I decided this week that I should sort through them properly and start to list them on Etsy. So I've set up a brand new Etsy shop called Passioned Patterns 
and I'm going to be listing all of my vintage patterns there. It's going to be a slow process because firstly I need to go through them all and some of them are a little bit damaged so I'm not going to list those. Um, I need to scan them all into the computer, then edit those photos and then upload them and do the listings. At the moment I've got a few up um, and as I start to go through them I will gradually add more and more. It's amazing though going through those patterns that even though some of the pictures are a little bit daggy and definitely dated, that the actual like designs and garments themselves really aren't. There's a lot of real classic styles and I can imagine knitting and wearing most of them. So it will be fun to be able to share those with other knitters and hopefully people can find a classic pattern that they've been looking for or a design that they're not able to find anymore and knit it up and hopefully share it back with me so I can see what they've made. Well that's it for another week. Thanks for spending some time with me. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and look forward to seeing you next week on the farm. Bye.